Greetings Earthlings. In a previous video, I showed a, um, let's say a copy or a version of the PA0RDT mini whip made in China, which you can buy on the well-known online supplier, very cheap, the, I think it was like 12 or 15 euros. And um, it, I couldn't make it work. And it had various design issues with it, like printed circuit tracks that shouldn't be there that needed cutting so that the DC blocking capacitor would protect the receiver from DC and all kinds of problems. But after all that, it still didn't work. So I, uh, I sent it back, got a refund. And then I invested the money in the original PA0 RDT mini whip from the manufacturer, inventor in um, the Netherlands. I'll put a link in the description below. And um, it arrived yesterday and I've spent a lot of time playing with it. Um, I didn't follow the instructions, uh, which you should do because it's very critical with earthing. I just plugged it in and I was blown away by the strength of signals I was receiving from it because it really is only a small metal plate that's receiving the signals and um, I'm blown away. Uh, let's take a look. I'll show it to you. I had to put it outside. Of course, indoors I received nothing in a flat, just noise, a lot of noise. And even on the balcony, it was only noise with very little signal. But as soon as you poke the antenna outwards, then you got signals. So what I did is I mounted it on the balcony here. So this is the antenna itself is just this little bit here in a plastic tube, which happens to be very accurately color matched to this standard drain pipe that I bought in a building supply shop. <laughs> um, so the actual antenna is that big. So what I did was I discovered that when I had it here, the signal strength receiver were, were, were low. But as soon as I just moved it out into the open air, they rose by about 30 or 40 dBs. So that uh, makes a huge difference. So I just made a little bracket with various pipe fittings pushed together and a tripod mount onto a balcony so that the signal that the antenna is fairly rigid and fairly waterproof the cable comes out through a T-piece and then goes indoors to my favorite receiver which is hiding under the lid let me just remove this and here's the favorite receiver at the moment which is the SDR Play RSPDX it's I just love it it's like a very professional piece of receiving kit um, that really works. And it has three antenna inputs, so it's easy to switch between antennas with the software to make comparisons. I really like that. Um, the software they recommend you use with it is SDR Play, which <coughs> works in a very professional way. It's a bit weird sometimes, I find, um, but it's about to be replaced by a, a newer software from SDR Play, which will also run on Linux, which is one of my favorite operating systems. This is Windows 10 here which I had to install. So the uh, mini whip PA0RDT cable comes in to its um, power injector. I've taken the lid off because I've been playing with moving this jumper around and then various different power supplies. It needs 12 volts nominally. Um, this one came with it. I bought that, um, which is an analog low noise power supply. And this is another analog power supply from Netgear which actually I think produces slightly less noise in some situations for me. Also, I've been playing with this Power Gorilla and that's a, um, a large uh, battery pack which works nicely, only outputs 8.8 .8 volts continuously otherwise it keeps turning off. Problem is it has um, switch mode power supply in here so it generates noise so you have to be careful where you place it. And I've noticed if I place the power injector which is in a plastic box on top of the uh, battery, then it picks up noise from the battery itself. And noise is, is the biggest problem, it seems. I'm listening at um, very low frequencies. I actually bought this antenna because I wanted to listen around the 100 to 300 kilohertz range to um, NDBs, non-directional beacons for aircraft, and other very slow, long-distance communication signals, for which, of course, you need antennas which are kilometers long, or hundreds of kilometers long if you've got the budget for it. Um, and the space. My balcony is about three square meters, so uh, I can't fit that kind of antenna on there. So I thought I'd just play with that little metal plate with a preamplifier, and it produces stunning results. As I keep saying I'm amazed. I've also been playing with noise, as I did in earlier videos with um, RF chokes on cables and USB noise from laptops. And I had to choose the laptop with the lowest noise to use, which happens to be from my Lenovo graveyard, the T540P, which is a i5 Series 4. So it's quite long in the tooth, but it seems to be 
The best shielded laptop is extremely heavy. I wouldn't want to carry it around. It weighs more than two kilos. Um, but when you look inside, it has a very solid metal frame, um, magnesium alloy or aluminium alloy. I'm not sure what it is, but it's well shielded and uh, really produces quite low noise. So I'm happy with that. The other thing I had to experiment with was the power supply for the laptop. Because sometimes I do charge my laptops and um, this power supply is an old 95 watt Lenovo power supply. It seems to produce lower noise than the one down there on the floor. That one, which is a more modern, smaller 65 watt power supply, which produces horrendous amounts of noise. I was shocked <laughs> when I was charging or running the laptop and the power supply, I couldn't hear anything. As soon as I unplugged the charger, then the noise disappeared. And it's really quite critical to play around with noise sources in this kind of receiving situation and also to use this ground isolating jumper from time to time. So let's uh, put the camera on the tripod, point it at the laptop screen, you can not worry about shaky hands anymore, and have a look at some signals I can receive and uh, how the noise changes. There is a noise source somewhere that's in another apartment which comes on quite frequently and there's nothing I can do to remove it, so I just have to wait till it goes off. It's only short bursts. Not sure what it could be. Maybe you know what it is. Anyway, let's um, let's have a look now at the receive signals. Here's a nice steady view of the uh, laptop screen. One other thing I forgot to mention is the trackpad. This laptop produces less radiated noise than the others because of the shielding, and also the trackpad produces less noise when I put my finger on it. It's still not perfect, but it's much lower than the uh, the V130 from Lenovo that I used to use for radio, which was the quietest laptop. So this one is better. It's older, heavier, but and consumes more power, but somehow it's, it's lower noise. So here we're looking at 400 kilohertz, a uh, NDB, non-directional beacon. If I turn the sound on, oh, there's the local buzz. Okay, there it is. Um, wait for it to send its call sign in CW. Ah, it's going to be blotted by the noise. Um, uh, ND, NDW, I think that was, I heard the end of it. So that's the beacon there at 400 kilohertz. The noise floor, when uh, that buzz stops, is around minus 115 dBs. Signal is at about minus 98 dBs. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but what's important is signal to noise ratio, of course, not absolute signal level. And I've been comparing this um, mini whip to a, a random piece of wire on the balcony and although the wire actually sometimes receives higher signal levels the noise levels about 20 dBs higher which gives a much lower signal to noise ratio because that's what's important the difference between signal and noise and uh, you can see that the mini whip well you can't but it is better what I'm going to do um, that's minus 115 dB noise floor when the buzz goes off I'm just going to move the jumper on that uh, power feed module to the isolated position and there you can see the noise drops already and also the buzz has less intensity now. The noise floor is now at minus 120 dBs and the buzz has dropped by about 10 dBs, I think, just by changing that jumper. So uh, you really need to experiment with grounding and stuff. Earth loops and every situation will be different. The laptop's not currently charging. Just to show you what happens, if I plug in the charger, which is here, I'm gonna plug the charger into the laptop when the buzz is not buzzing, I can find it. And there we see the noise has increased. It's not too bad because that jumper is in the right position. If I move the jumper to the wrong position, then the noise does that, which means you can't really receive any signals and the noise has jumped right up in level because the jumper is in the wrong place and the laptop's charging. Oh, and there's the overload lamp coming on here, so the receiver's overloading. Um, if I use the smaller charger on the laptop, then the noise goes up even higher, and it's it's really horrible. So what I'm going to do is unplug the charger because the laptop doesn't need charging. That helps a lot. Put the jumper back in the right place, which is here, and that gives me the best possible signals and noise ratio with the lowest noise, 400 kilohertz. I've saved a few favorite frequencies. If we go down to, I think it's 80 on a 78 kilohertz, then I've got that thing. I'm not quite sure what it is yet. It sounds like a time signal, the ones that pulse at one second intervals, but it never seems to send its call sign or I get too bored waiting. So I haven't heard it send a call sign yet. That's a 78 kilohertz. And this is on the 
PA0 RDT mini whip, and it's quite a healthy signal. Also at 130 kilohertz, there's a uh, something there. Maybe you can tell me what that is. It's a carrier with the odd burst of data occasionally here at 130 kilohertz. I put it on lower sideband. There we go. Maybe someone can tell me what that is. And it seems to repeat itself up here at 140 kilohertz. I don't know if that's the spurious in this receiver or really it's sent on two or three different frequencies. And if we go and look at some, some amateur bands, um, let's try 14 megahertz. Where have I saved that? Oh, it's the first one in the list. Oh, so the conditions are really flat at the moment. That was much stronger in the early morning. Now it's around lunchtime, midday. So there's the um, FT8 frequencies. But you can hear there's a nice low noise floor. It's about almost minus 130 dB noise floor. And that nasty buzz from the neighbors <clears throat> doesn't seem to affect 20 meters. So you can see you can you can listen to a lot of things here with this antenna. Let's go and have a listen to 21 megahertz. There it is. That's the uh, FT8 on 21 megahertz working nicely. My favorite 10 megahertz weather RTTY weather forecast is there. That's always there. It's a good thing to go and look for at 10.1 megahertz. If you listen on upper side band, it sounds like that. Sending RYRY at the moment. Uh, what else have I got saved? That's it, really. The aeronautical beacons. Because so I really wanted to listen to low frequencies, and, and that antenna is really good. The PA0RDT. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm blown away by the performance. Low noise. Let's turn the sound off. Low noise and some signal received. It may not be the strongest signals ever, but in a situation with a tiny balcony on a flat, then it's, it's pretty good. Um, I'll just show you another receiver I really like, which is different to this one. So let's just go and get that. So my other favorite receiver, which works remarkably well, even at low frequencies, that's where I discovered those NDB beacons, um, is the D808. This is actually a Sihuadon version. The original one was XH data. I think it's the same company. They just put a different name on it. This I got recently, and I'm also shocked at how well this works. Um, it has an antenna socket on the side, so you can plug in an antenna in the ground, 3.5 millimeter jack, so I made some adapters to BNC and SO239. Um, and this, this works amazingly well. I can pick up those beacons with similar signal to noise ratio using only the built-in ferrite rod antenna, which seems to be remarkably sensitive. You can't plug in an external antenna on medium wave and long wave, it has no effect. It uses its ferrite rod antenna. I was also experimenting with ferrite rods myself, and although you can see the thing resonating and the noise peak moving as you tune with the variable capacity, I couldn't receive any signals at all with old ferrite rods stolen from an old valve radio. So this manages to do it somehow. And I'll do another video about this receiver, some of the quirks. It has a few quirks and oddities, but for 60 euros, then uh, it's, it's like a free gift. Amazing. So um, it doesn't have a waterfall display, but that's it. So that's enough for now. Please make comments below. I'm interested in hearing about your experiences or suggestions, maybe identify some of those VLF signals, and uh, I'll make another video soon. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.